for the other side, we're going to bring in Richard Sakaridis, who was so gracious uh, talking to us. I don't know if uh, any of you guys remember this during those critical uh, and sometimes controversial Kagan confirmation hearings where he was able to give us his perspective on Elena Kagan, having worked with her in the Clinton White House. Richard's also going to be able to talk to us about Proposition 8, something he's also uh, the, the uh, gay marriage, uh, same-sex marriage ban that the federal judge struck down, something that he's also written quite extensively about. Richard, thanks for joining us. I, Hi, Jen. It's good to have you back. I, I'm sorry you're not in studio, but thank you for joining us by the My phone. My pleasure. Um, I, you listen to the Senator Sessions interview. Boy, he, they're really, you know, you get the feeling that this is their last, last gasp, and I'm not surprised that the connection is made uh, with this decision yesterday and the vote today. But they're really throwing everything at it, everything they've got left. And I thought Senator Sessions was really making more of an argument against the role of the judiciary than he was about same-sex marriage. Right, against the role of, of judges uh, just getting involved in too many of these cases. In anything. These issues, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's talk about the opinion first, which I know you've uh, had a chance to read. And obviously, I mean, greeted yesterday with tremendous uh, joy in California, and then also a, a great amount of uh, consternation and controversy, depending on where you come down on this. What's your take on the ruling? When you look well, at the ruling, it's going to be appealed. What's your take on that, and what do you think is going to happen well, on appeal? Well, the ruling is quite thorough and quite sweeping. And um, to get a sense of it, you know, I read it last night uh, on the computer, but this morning when I was when I got to my office, I printed it out, and you know, it lands on your desk with a thump. Well, it's 100, 136 pages. I have it in front of me now. It's like you can't carry it around. You know, it's like so thick, uh, and and much of it is is single spaced. Um, the judge did a, you know, the judge knew that this w he was writing for the ages and uh, writing for posterity, I guess, and he it's about as thorough a legal opinion as you, you would ever see. And um, it's obviously going to uh, get a lot of scrutiny, and it was obviously written by someone who wanted it to withstand a lot of scrutiny. But I think it's it's really a moment for uh, the gay rights movement in this country. I mean, it's, it's uh, the first time a federal judge in this kind of sweeping language has held that the Constitution uh, prohibits discrimination against gays and lesbians based upon just their status. And, the, you know, this was the legal dream team that came together, Ted Olson and David Boyce. And right, who by SS, of course, were on opposite sides in Bush versus Gore. Yeah. I mean, they've come together now in this case with an eye on the Supreme Court. And they put together a very simple case here, really, and a very simple argument. You know, they got two couples who've been together each for over 10 years who were in love and wanted to get married, and they said that the, under the Constitution they couldn't be treated differently just because of their status, and the judge agreed with them. Well, now, the judge in his ruling, which I think, as, as you point out, I mean, it's obviously written uh, with an eye uh, on that appeal that everybody knows is coming and probably all the way up to the Supreme Court. You know, he has 80 different findings of fact, including uh, these kind of sweeping, like you said, statements where it really is just this enormous uh, victory, not only for same-sex marriage, but for gay people, where he says same-sex love and intimacy are well documented in human history uh, and that same-sex couples are identical to opposite-sex couples and their abilities to have relationships, and that religious beliefs that homosexuality is a sin uh, harm, those religious beliefs harm gays and lesbians. I mean, you know, what, uh, you know, what kind of that, what does that mean, having those well, kind of strong findings of fact like that as this case unfolds? I think what the point you're, the point you're making is really a very important one, because I think that this decision will, be, will, will, will come to be seen um, about much more than just same-sex marriage. And, of course, you know, the battle around same-sex marriage is important, but, it's, but it takes on its symbolic importance because it's a stand-in for something larger in society. You know, whether or not we're going to treat gays and lesbians as fully equal in every way, uh, and whether or not the, you know, sexual orientation issues are worthy of a civil rights struggle. This, so the, a decision like this, which which not only says that gay people ought to be able to be married, but that they, but they are, in the eyes of the law, the same as everyone else and cannot really be discriminated against in any way, is usually symbolic within the gay community and I think will really be a rallying cry, but really also becomes politically very symbolic because, uh, you know, for a long time in this country, uh, we've, we, 
gays and lesbians have said that you know the way to go is incremental change and and even in the democrat within the democratic party you know the change has been incremental starting with bill clinton who was the first person when i worked for him ever to uh, you know embrace support from the from the gay and lesbian community but all along the way you know it's been little bits and pieces here, little bits and pieces there. And President Obama, you know, has been terrific in many ways and has said that he supports equal rights for gay people, but he doesn't support this, you know. So I think you're going to begin to see um, people in the public sphere uh, are no longer going to be able to take these nuanced positions on issues like this. You know, you're either going to be for full equal rights as guaranteed by the Constitution or you're not. So it's going to kind of force their hand. I mean, this this decision you're saying could force politicians' hands to finally, you know, what, come out of the closet on their views and really say what they think and vote uh, the, the way that they really believe? Yes, and you see some of that already, you know, even before this decision. In some of the more progressive states, you see, peop you see uh, uh, people coming out for this. But President Obama and the Democratic Party, especially in the next two years, not so much in the midterms, but in the next two years, face, an, you know, important challenges because... What are they going to say in their Democratic Party platform when the president runs again uh, in, in, uh, in 2012? They're going to have to have a platform that supports full equal rights, and they're going to have to be for this. And the president right now is not for this. Well, you know, one of the things that when you were talking about uh, the dream team and, you know, Ted Olson and, and uh, David Boyce uh, taking this case on, a lot of these uh, gay rights groups didn't think this was a good strategy, that they don't think the Supreme Court is ready to go this far, uh, that the court is not ready to recognize a constitutional right to same-sex marriage. This is all going to hinge on Anthony Kennedy. What do you think about that? Well, you're absolutely correct, and a lot of the established gay rights groups were very uh, hesitant to endorse this early on. But I think that they've been mostly persuaded, and I think there's nobody in this country better than Ted Olson at uh, predicting. You know, obviously you can't completely predict how the Supreme Court would come out, but I think that he and David Boyce feel feel pretty good that they have a strong case before the Supreme Court. And, I mean, it, it, it will probably be a 5-4 decision, but I think they think they're going to be on the right side of that. and and. You know, nobody knows better than them. All right. Well, Richard, thanks so much. We really appreciate your joining us and look forward to having you back in the studio next thanks, time. Thanks, Jan. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.